So first things first, David, how are you? I'm doing very well, man. It's good to see you again. You too. Different, different album this time, but we're still we're still going strong. <laughs> well, before we delve into the album, I'd like to go into kind of what we've, uh, what you've experienced in the last, uh, let's say, couple of years. Ever ever since, kind of your your music had begun to be more successful. And now I read the bio, and there was one line that I was really interested interested in. Uh, which is, I am just a caricature of myself. That you, that that was a thought that at some point started to arise within you. How come? Well, I think I don't know about anybody else, but I've always kind of been one to uh, to analyze myself all the time, you know, and uh, to investigate what makes me th- tick you know, and and what inspires me and what am I afraid of and. What do I hate? What makes me angry? You know, who do, why do I love? What is love? You know, it's, I've always, I've, uh, there's never been a time when, when I haven't done it. Um, and I think after the first record, I, I I spent my whole life trying to get to that point of getting, feeling like I belonged, right? It's essentially that. If you want to boil it down, it's essentially wanting to belong as part of something bigger than myself, you know? So I found that in recording the first album or moving to Dublin and getting this community feeling like part of a tribe. And then we, I released the first record and I played the Olympia in Dublin and that was uh, something I'd always wanted to do. And then after that, I suppose I was burnt out, you know, emotionally and mentally and physically. And uh, I went off to Paris for a month in February last year to uh, put myself back together again. And so I started looking at all the different versions of myself mm. to get some perspective. And, you know, it sounds very cynical now because I, I'm, I'm in a better place. But at the time I was thinking, I'm just fucking this, this caricature and suspenders on a stage, you know, and outside of that, I don't know who I am because so much of my energy was wrapped up in that. Do you get what I'm saying? Sure. So, uh, so that's, that's, that kind of, those, that way of thinking, and that kind of call to action to heal and to put myself back together again. That's where this new album came. And uh, I, I, over time, I, I got, I got well. And I started to, to to love myself and to, you know, to like myself a bit better. This this obviously sounds somewhat counterintuitive because um, the pandemic has been terrible for a lot of people. But in a sense, then did it come for you at the right time where you were able to? take a moment, take a couple, kind of the, the last couple of uh, years to, to take a step back and look at yourself and see what you are. And, and as you mentioned, kind of figure out who you were outside of this musical endeavor that you were. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I think it was um, it was an opportunity for me to to do that. And I, I, I mean, I gr- grew up on the road um, over the last few years and especially 2017 to 2020 those three years were just very amazing but again you don't I didn't have awareness of of uh you know rest or or looking after myself or and there's no real time to breed when you're on the road constantly and you're being you're in front of audiences all the time and then you go back and you close that door and you're on your own and you're trying to live on you're trying to get back on the beam you know um so when it all happened last year i just could breathe you know but again it wasn't just a matter of like put my feet up and uh just meditate for a year you know it was like it was a lot of um it was a lot of, i was faced with a lot with myself like a lot a lot a lot of people were and that was terrifying because <laughs> i didn't know who i was do you know what i kind of were and uh i didn't um so I was faced with all these repressed feelings and, you know, things I had to process. And, and it gave me that. And it gave me a chance just to, to fall in love with writing again and making music. Because mm. uh, that's that's initially why I did it. It was for me, you know. In the beginning, it was for me. And I'm back there again. And that's a beautiful thing, you know. 
Yeah, that's good to hear. Well, one thing I find interesting about this, and this is more something that I maybe it applies to to kind of what you were dealing with, but it's something I've I've thought about a lot is where we all have these conceptions of what the world is, and that they can be very romantic conceptions of what it would be to be a writer, to be a musician, to to be a touring musician, to go to all these fancy places all around the world, and then there's also the reality of it. <laughs> which isn't always as romantic as, as we put it into our minds. So did you encounter in those three, uh, three years that you mentioned, did you encounter kind of things that where you felt where, where it was very tangible that you weren't uh, being yourself in a way, or you weren't in touch with, with who you were? Um, I think there's, um, I, I used to be of the belief that, because it was something I always wanted to do all my life, you know, to be on, to be on a stage and to have people actually listening and connecting with your music. Um, and to travel with that as well was just a dream. So when that started to happen, uh, I didn't dare, you know, kind of say no to any opportunity because that would be un being ungrateful. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, sure. uh, but again, like I said, you can do that for so long and then you start to put, you, you just start to put other people in front of your own wellness and that just leads to you becoming unwell or just, you know, burnt out or spent, you know? So I, I, I think I know what it takes now to get up, to get up on a stage and, and to go out and to perform at a certain level. And uh, you need to, you know, I'm a little bit older now as well. And you just, you need to, you need to, put yourself first in that regard you know but definitely being on the road it's it, it can be it can be very vulnerable it's it can be very lonely um you know nobody showed nobody ever shows showed me how to you know find that healthy balance between uh, living in the uh, it's essentially a bubble on being on tour and then trying to integrate with real the real world when you get back from tour so that's something that i had to learn the hard way over time you know and uh because you go from one extreme to the other and then walk into the shop for a pint of milk can be overwhelming, you know, because of just the, the, the fear or the anxiety that comes with, where am I now? Two days ago or yesterday, I was on the stage in Lowlands, you know, playing to thousands of people. Now I'm here and it's very quiet and, you know, so it's, it's, it's taken me a while to, to learn how to live. And, and this record has helped me feel more whole you know, as a person, you know? Well, what's the first step of you piecing yourself together then? Was it the writing? Was it delving back into, the, like you said, that creativity for yourself rather than for, for somebody else? Yeah, it came after, it came after Paris because when I first went to Paris, I, I took like three steps back, you know, I just, mm. I just drank, drank a lot and uh, <laughs> didn't do much else. You know, I just stayed on my own and, um, I got a lot of writing done. I suppose I was in, you know, I was hurting, you know, so I, I got a lot of things out of me that I needed to. But then when I came back to Ireland after that, um, yeah, I, I, I just started focusing on um, chipping away at these new ideas every day as they were coming and then putting them down and, and just just doing the simple things and find great great enjoyment in that. And then the song started coming. I wasn't chasing them, Robin, you know, that's what I was trying to, I wasn't chasing them. I mean, I got really inspired during this record and I became fixated, but I wasn't like totally obsessed by writing the next song because I didn't have the energy to, do you know what I mean? So, and obviously what was happening around the world, you know, so I was kind of sitting in a period of just watching watching the ideas come in, then focusing on them when I had to. And then the record and the story, I mean, all the songs are just emotional responses, you know. Um, to me, unraveling David, you know, and and also I was writing this during a time of, you know, an immense change in my life and then in, in the world. So it's about humanness throughout, you know. The record is 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 it's a, just a, it's an exploration into what it means to be human during a time of intense change, you know, and, and everything that comes with that, you know.
And that's very interesting, I think, because, uh, well, my, I, I like to, maybe this is a weird uh, analogy or something, but I like to read a lot about uh, the Second World War and about the soldiers' perspectives and all that kind of stuff, because it feels like in moments of crisis, in, in the difficult moments, that's when the human condition kind of, uh becomes very raw and becomes very very honest so for you what's the what's that uh you've always been very open in how you write but th this time perhaps more introspective than before was that a, a kind of a bridge you had to cross across yeah i think for a, a, a necessity as well you know like to grow and to to um to get over things, you know, to process things. Like I said, there's no point, like I didn't want to hide behind metaphor, you know, I mean, I've lived it myself long enough to, to know, you know, when I'm, when I'm being scathingly honest and when I'm holding a bit back because I'm afraid of how I might react or I'm afraid about, afraid about how other people will perceive it. Whereas on this record, before it was a record, I mean, I'm just writing on this is I'm just writing this thing and before and the songs are coming on, I'm enjoying what's how they sound and the imagery in it. And uh, but I, I I just needed to, to just be absolutely personal for, for me, um, like uh, to go back to even me in the incubator, you know, I was in Peter O'Toole. I'm a six week premature ejaculation. baby. Well, that's me having a complex about being prematurely born and 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 then wondering well is that where i i became introspective was it in the incubator is that where the songs started coming is that where my imagination started um and it's also me kind of feeling like i was you know maybe i wasn't loved you know you know this kind of this these are all personal things that i have to get over or not or, or learn to live with or accept or embrace so that was what I needed to do at this point in my life. And, and even the songs, me, myself and lunacy embracing my madness because I have to, and Philomena, you know, all the songs represent this kind of work. You know what I mean? Um, but it's about being human and, and processing all that you've been, you know what I mean? In an attempt to understand and to get more meaning, you know, you mentioned uh, me, myself, and Lucy, which is which might be my favorite on the album. So, what was the starting point of that? Can you remember when you wrote that? What what kind of mindset you were in as you were writing that? Yeah, yeah, I I, I was in Paris and uh, I I was out on my own drinking. I left my 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 jacket on the metro with the card to get in mm. to the place I was living. So the gates were shut after curfew, and. Uh, I, I couldn't get in. So I, I, I honestly, it was freezing in February in Paris. I had no jacket and I thought, well, this place might open or somebody will come to security guard. And anyway, I saw a cardboard box and put it in, and I lay in it, you know, because I thought I was going to freeze to that, you know, it was that cold. And, uh, anyway, I, I got up a while later, started walking around and realized I was on the wrong fucking street. You know, I was wrapping the wrong door. So just, absolute you know silliness but i was reflecting on that afterwards and then i started looking at um like i say in that song well, it's hard to accept that your mind is sound when your heart's become an art exhibition when your life's become a public execution you know so what i meant there was that how can i process being how can i you know accept myself or there's no space for this when you're front and center and and it's social media and you know what I mean? It's like, how can I do this when I'm my private world is public knowledge, you know? Um, but I can because you can shut that out, you know. And uh, at the end of the song, it's it's me accepting who I am and just yeah, we're, I'm breaking bread. I'm on the mend. You know, there's many different versions of me, but it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, insane. You know, it's just I'm I'm a creative person. I'm not this one thing that's what i've learned through this whole process i'm not just one this one thing nor do i have to be this one thing many different things and that's okay you know? mm. Make, that makes a lot of sense and and the way you speak to it was was there a sense of um wanting to prove yourself before or, or having this perfect a perfect version or perfect image of yourself before and and now kind of 
uh, realizing that that isn't the real thing. And that, as you say, there's a multitude of things going on uh, at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just, it's just that it's, it's, a, it's, um, I was a very young man coming up, you know, getting a lot of attention, you know, uh, trying to, trying to cope with that. You know, you, 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 you've got all these dreams and you start achieving them and nobody ever tells you how to cope with it or how to deal with it. And, uh, you, you, you never really had a healthy relationship with yourself to start. So, you know what I mean? You weren't really sure if you liked yourself in the, in the beginning. And now you have to kind of go out and, and, and cope with all these things in front of all these people. Mm. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. But that nearly, you know, r- ran me into the ground, that way of living. Whereas now, listen, I'm, you know what I mean? I, 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 I have a good relationship with myself today. And this record as well, my attitude going into this was I'm willing to turn people off with this record mm-hmm. so I can be turned on by the whole process again. Do you know what I mean? I want it to be sonically different. I want the, the song to be structured differently. And I think we achieved that, you know. Yeah, you mentioned sounding different. And I think uh, me, myself and Lunacy is also a good example of that where on the, the, the record as a whole, the music has become more expansive and that there's there's just more, maybe this sounds weird, but there's just more to it this, uh, on this record. So uh, f- for you, how did that develop? How did the sonic landscapes uh, within uh, these songs develop for you rather than just, just uh, keeping it s- simple? I, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it, but... Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I mean, the first record has got this wildness to it. It's live in the studio. Mm. This what then um, was me working with John Jonathan Mooney, and I discovered John's music. Or he's in a band called Other Lives, an American band. And what I loved was essentially the strings. You know, the Ennio Morricone, this kind of like simmering, bubbling thing underneath the surface. You know, and when I heard that, I was like, wow, I want to replicate the inner world, the landscape of the, of the inner world on this record, uh, different sonically without electric guitars, you know, because I wanted to represent how I actually feel when I'm writing these things, this inspiration coming up. And John helped to sculpt the strings that were this ambience underneath the surface of my, of, of, of my vocal, uh, of my lyric. Um, so that was a revelation, you know, working with Jonathan uh, and, like every every each song is a different environment because of that because we set about to map it that way you know. And uh, I read somewhere or I saw somewhere I think that you did, this time around you had three weeks in the studio which was a good thing which was uh, <laughs> so, so did that help did that help that you had a little bit more uh, time to to try things and yeah yeah absolutely I didn't know myself we had three weeks which was a lifetime you know <laughs> um. Yeah, it was it was very it was very laid back, you know. Like a beginner's get to bravery was done and was like so intense. But we had and it was beautiful, but we had been living with those songs on the first record for two years, you know. So I'm gigging them live, you know. Um whereas when I went into the studio with Jonathan and Aaron Steele on percussion. I just had demos of these songs that I'd done on my phone or on my, my computer, you know what I mean? Uh, I didn't gig them. I, I, I didn't play any of them live. You know, he was the only person that would have heard them, you know, my girlfriend, you know, so mm. it, it, I didn't know. So there was a great excitement. There was a great, like, whew, this could go, this could go either way. But I, it was like doing, doing something for the first time because essentially it was doing something brand new. So it was like, oh, and all that excitement went into it. I felt then I could just pull off all the layers and say what I have I had to say, you know, and not be ashamed. Just wow, it was great. It was such an exciting time. Yeah. This might be a perhaps a simpli- too simplistic a way of looking at, but can you share something that you've discovered about yourself through this process of of of, of uh, finding yourself again or, or putting the focus on yourself? Just compassion, I think compassion for myself. Um, uh, I was so severe on myself and uh, before, you know, so severe. I had to be, you know, 
so severe and, and, and but essentially it's all fear you have to look at the root of it you know it's it's the fear of 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 um not loving yourself or not being loved or not liking yourself and not not being likable you know and i was so, i was very afraid in the past and that and fear can manifest as all sorts of things you know like uh just not being able to be present, you know, because um, I was kind of hung up on oh, well, how is this going to be perceived or, you know, that's me being honest about it because I was full of fear, man, because like you're thinking, well, this could end, you know what I mean? I, I, what if this record doesn't do well, you know, is this all going to end? Or But that's not the point, you know what I mean? The point was that I did work outside of music on myself and I realized that, you know, I have this this connection with, with language and, and songs. Mm. But I'm so much more than that, you know what I mean? I'm not just David Keenan, a musician, you know what I mean? I'm so much more. And because of that, I love, I've fallen in love with, with writing again and, and, and music and, and art. And, and I'm compassionate with myself. I'm just doing my best. I don't have to be the best, you know what I mean? What is something that you started doing for yourself outside of music. There's, there, I, I did see a picture. I don't know if, if it was actually you drawing, but you, you were painting or there, there was some painting going on. So is, is that something you, you started doing or what, what was something that you started doing just for yourself outside of music and, and anybody else? Well, I moved to Spain in September after I recorded the record. Okay. I moved to Barcelona and uh, I learned how to swim. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I could never really swim, you know, I could maybe I could float, <laughs> but, like, but uh, um, I could never swim comfortably, you know what I mean? So I was there right beside the sea and I taught myself how to swim. I was in the swimming pool swimming, but painting was something that I did pick up because my girlfriend is, is an artist and uh, I just, you know, I just wanted to let the inner child out and play, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't for to be hung up in a gallery. <laughs> It's just making a mess. So I started making a mess and uh, yeah, swimming and painting, you know, these are, these are great achievements in life for me, man. You know what I mean? Forget about streams and all that bullshit, you know, learning to swim and painting. Now there's something you can be proud of, you know? <laughs> you mentioned something kind of earlier where you said you were willing to lose people on this record and then and kind of what you're saying just now that it seems like your priorities have shifted is that fair to say yeah 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 absolutely because i know what's really important you know and what's what's not important and what's beyond my control you know i know what i can quite what i have some say in today you know it's just my own actions and how i think about myself and the world and beyond that it's not nothing else is really my business do you know what i mean um do you know it's it's like yeah you're right priorities um i think there's a great there's like in 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 the music industry it's very insidious and uh and that's another thing when you get a bit older you realize well this is actually an industry as well you know what i mean sure you know sure. You, it is an industry you know when you're a young man a young a young woman you're doing it for for art you know and you think everybody else is on the same wavelength, that's not the case. You know what I mean? It's a business as well. There's a lot of pressure. Um, and and I don't know, I mean, all, all the social media pressure as well, maybe people cope better with it, but it's very vampiric and it's very insidious and you don't need to be in that world. You know, I'm, I'm more focused now on, on uh, like you say, just having fun in life. Do you know what I mean? I'm enjoying enjoying doing these things when they happen and not being hung up on chasing them when they're not, you know. And paint, I'll, I'll paint you a drawing and send it to you in the post instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about having fun then, because you did go on a tour just now in September um, alongside uh, Rodrigo y Gabriela. Uh, so what was it like then after going through what you went through in the uh, past year and a half and then kind of ha having that uh, shift in, the, in your mentality and then being back on tour and then kind of trying to, it, I, don't, I don't know how to phrase this right, but was there a fear like you were once the touring started that you would fall back into bad habits or, or something like that? 
Well, I think um, because it's been so long that I, I, you, you, I didn't know if I could, how can I do this? You know, <laughs> it's, it's like riding a bike, you know. <laughs> Uh, but the first gig like was really absurd because you know the first gig was okay it was in a theater but we played some venues with, like 4000 people out in this huge wineries and and uh, and it was like wow this is absurd you know like what you, you know I was kind of I had moments of holding on to the microphone like fuck you know this is vertigo you know but um no, it was beautiful. I've never been in that part of America before. Like, again, all those crowds. Um, Rodrigo and Gabriela, their music is really, like, it's it's real uplifting. It's, it's they're like, it's shamanistic almost. They're putting out this this amazing energy into the crowd. And uh, I managed to connect with, with the audiences along the way and plant seeds for the new record. So, um, the kind of like the, the the boy in me was really having a great time because it was on the bus, it was on a tour bus, you know, sleeping in the bunk. It was like being on a pirate ship. Do you know what I mean? You're with all these. I was with all the crew, you know, and and anybody who knows, you know, crew members, you know, roadies, techs, they're all like pirates anyway. You know, it's like a piratical lifestyle. We're all nomads traveling together on this ship. You know, <laughs> so um, I had it. Oh, I was. I had a great time. There was a couple of moments of like fucking hell this is so intense you know it's been two years and how can i do this again but you just get through it you know you get through it and then you mentioned the experience of of and I, I, i'm just asking this because i do really enjoy uh rodrigo and gabriela's music as well and then as you yeah. mentioned when i whenever i see the play it's it they're so in the moment it feels like so so when when you see something like that and it's not just them but other artists and so does that kind of inspire you then that that it is possible that you can uh, have, have this very real connection to to the craft that that you're in yeah and i felt and i found that again during that tour you know i, I found that again i found that assurance of just me and the guitar and the song and an audience and that can, being able to connect, you know, I found, I rediscovered that. Like there was one gig in San Diego where it was in a harbor and I was playing the songs and uh, just the moon was out, you know, and there was, it was just stillness, you know, and, and then sharing stories with the audience and laughter. And then the audience singing a lot, sing holding a note for me as I sang Grogan's Druid at the end of the record, you know, and, this thing just happens and I rediscovered that. Um, also during the tour, I, I was, I had my guitar tuned two and a half steps down uh, from standard for a year. So I was literally out of tune and I was getting so hung up on my voice and getting frustrated. I don't want to play the songs because, you know, I, I was singing in the wrong key basically. And uh, as a singer, that can be very frustrating. I don't know how I, I, I didn't, you know, how blind was I not to see it, you know. So on the tour, I tuned up and um, I feel in tune again, you know. Mm -hmm. So I did that tour, I feel in tune again. And now this album's coming out and it's all happened as it, as it, it's all worked out great. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, feeling in tune again. I think that's a great description of what we've uh, kind of just talked about uh, this past 30 minutes. So. David, may I thank you as always for your time. Oh, thanks, Robin. Great to see you, man. Thank you so much.